In this lecture video, we will learn about nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR, which is one of the most powerful techniques for structural determination of organic molecules. And what makes it possible is that the nuclei of certain elements, for example, hydrogen, carbon-13, nitrogen, fluorine, and phosphorus, the name a few, have magnetic property to them. And what this means is that the nuclear behave just like a magnet and therefore interact with an external magnetic field. And the interaction between this nuclear nuclei and the external magnetic field can then translate into signal that allow us to put the structure of the molecule together. Using NMR, it would be possible for us to distinguish between the different isomers and also and enteomers as well. We can actually have enough information to distinguish among them. And that is by far much more powerful than what IR can do. And here in this class, since we are learning organic chemistry, which primarily deal with hydrogen and carbon, therefore proton and carbon-13 NMR are widely being used. And these are the two methods that we will discuss here in this class. Proton NMR are also called hydrogen NMR. So this is a method in which that we take advantage of the nuclear of the hydrogen atom to learn about its structure. So here in this case right here, if we were to be looking at the nuclear of the hydrogen atom, it consists of a proton in it. And surrounding it, there is the electron cloud. In this case, the electron is orbiting about this nuclear of the hydrogen atom. Any time we have electron moving around in a circle, it will then produce something that we call the induced magnetic field. And the direction of the induced magnet magnetic field is then parallel to the movement of the electron in here. So this arrow in green represents the direction of the induced magnetic field. And simply put, we can think of a hydrogen as behaving just like a magnet, for an example, in here. And therefore, we can draw an arrow to represent the directions of the magnets represented by this hydrogen. So every hydrogen is an individual magnet. So if we were to have a lot of hydrogen in a molecule, and if we were to put them in a condition without a magnetic field, then technically speaking, all the hydrogen all of this magnet right here can be aligned in any direction that they want to. So imagine if you were to take a lot of small magnets and they're far apart from each other and we put them on a table, then they can fall in any direction that they want, depending on how they fall down. But if we were to now take a lot of this small magnet right here and put them into a magnetic field, an environment that is have magnetic property to it, and in this case, we call this B naught. B naught is basically the external magnetic field. Once we take this little magnet over here and we put them into an external magnetic field, then what happens is that we will then see this magnet right here will begin to flip in which that they can align in two possible directions. One is where they would point along the, with the direction of the external magnetic field. So in this case right here, <coughs> B naught represent the external magnetic field and the arrow point up, which basically represent the direction of the external magnetic field. So when we put the hydrogen into this external magnetic field, the hydrogen can also point in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So that will be one possible state of it. The other possible state will then be a point opposite in the opposite direction compared to the direction of the external magnetic field. And we would then call this the beta spin state. So the alpha spin th state is whenever the hydrogen is pointing in the same direction as the direction of the magnetic field, the external magnetic field. And the beta spin state is when the hydrogen is pointing in the opposite direction to the direction of the external magnetic field. So again, alpha spin state 
and beta spin state. Now the alpha spin state is actually lower in energy because it does not require that much energy for it to be in the same directions as the direction of the external magnetic field. The beta spin state, however, is the one that is in high energy and we normally refer to this as the excited state. So the alpha spin state is also referred to as the ground state and the beta state is then called the excited state. <clears throat> so, how does the NMR work? So, the NMR machine works as following. So, first of all, there are two possible spin states where the hydrogen can be pointed in. It can be pointed up or pointed down, or the alpha state or the beta state. So, what happens is that when we put this into a external magnetic field and let's say now here is the strength of the external magnetic field or basically a very strong magnet the stronger the magnet the magnet that we put the hydrogen into then we will be able to separate the alpha and the beta spin state better so here in this case if we were to take the hydrogen and put this into an external mag a magnet let's say producing 200 megahertz Then the alpha state and the beta spin state are separated by this much energy difference. If we were to now put this into a 400 megahertz NMR or magnet, then now the separation between the alpha and the beta spin state become bigger. So the stronger the strength of the external magnetic field, the bigger the energy gap between the alpha and the beta spin state would be. And this bigger, this gap right here, it is actually much easier for us to distinguish between them. So what happened is that in NMR, we will allow the hydrogens to go flow from the alpha spin state into the beta spin state and let it relax back down. As it relax back down, then the bigger this energy gap right here, then the stronger the signal would be. So basically, the stronger the B naught, or basically the external magnetic field, then the larger in energy between the alpha and the beta spin state would be. And therefore, the signal it would be producing would be more defined, or it then say to be in higher resolution. So now let's go over how this works a bit better. So in NMR, the other component that we will also be utilizing is basically the radio frequency. And this is why that we use radio waves. So we are using the radio wave to basically resonate the nuclei from the alpha spin state into the beta spin state. Due to the energy gap between the alpha spin state and the beta spin state, ideally speaking at ground state, when we do not apply in energy, then all of the hydrogen, when we expose it to an extern external magnetic field, it will be aligned in this alpha state. But by now, taking radio frequency and then irradiating this sample right here, the hydrogen with radio frequency, we will be able to take this alpha spin state and convert this into this beta spin state. And as we let this relax, or basically removing or stopping putting in the radio frequency, we will then see that the beta spin state will then relax back down into the alpha spin state. And as this step right here happened, this relaxation happened, then energy will then be emitted in the form of a signal. So as the nuclei resonate back from the beta spin state into the alpha spin state, 
a signal is then being emitted and therefore plot on the NMR spectrum. Now, we will focus mostly on this signal right here. Very important. There are three things about this signal right here that has a lot of information in them that allow us to determine the structure of a molecule. So the signals are very distinctive and informative. And the three characteristics of the signal that we will emphasize on. First, the intensity of the signal. The intensity of the signal refer to how strong the signal is. And second, the chemical shift of the signal. The chemical shift is basically where on the spectrum does the signal show up. And third, the multiplicity of the signal. The multiplicity of the signal refer to how the signal look like. So each of the signal is distinct in these three characteristics. And by analyzing these three char characteristics, we will be able to determine the structure of the organic molecule.